you are looking at the newly crowned National Geographic Photo of the Year. These majestic bald eagles look like they were all trying to get a perfect spot on that perch. And wow, this picture beat out some amazing photos. And you can see them all up on our Facebook page as well. A beautiful such, start to Such a majestic out. animal too. Yeah. Aren't they gorgeous? Yeah. I know. I saw some in person once when I took a trip to Alaska. I took an Alaskan cruise and they seemed to be everywhere there. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, whoa. Definitely don't see them every day. No, I love seeing them <laughs> soar through the sky, though. Pretty cool. Yes. Oh, well, we're so glad you are with us. Welcome. I'm Julie Grant. And I'm Jay Struberg in for Rob Nelson. Let's begin, as we always like to do here, with the stories from the top of our feed. And we start on the most famous street in America where a new lesson is being taught for families who make a tremendous sacrifice so we can enjoy safety and freedom. I am honored to have served my country. Sometimes, I have really hard days, and that's when I think about my Wentwells. Three simple things, no matter how large or how small, that have gone well that day. The new videos produced by, you guess it, the, the folks over at Sesame Street, right? They're aimed at military families. They're designed to teach children and their moms and dads about the importance of self-care. A survey of teens and military families found that nearly half showed significant signs of emotional distress. And so these digital videos that we're looking at here are meant to help families open up and talk about those issues. And the videos also present some simple steps that everyone can follow to feel a little better. Okay, just when you thought Sesame Street couldn't <laughs> do any more good in America, there we go. Knocking it out of the park. Bravo, yeah. right? You know, because mental health, it, it's tough to talk about. There's a stigma attached. We don't treat it in America like we treat our physical health. No. It needs to be brought to the forefront. People need to know it's okay not to be okay and need to learn good, healthy coping mechanisms. So here, especially, you know, to do this, to, to help honor, you know, those heroes who've served and show love to their families and support uh, is, is just incredible. It's great. It's a great story. And moving from one lovable set of characters teaching important lessons to another. A childhood classic and Hollywood classic is getting a sequel after more than 66 years. I can't wait for this one. Yeah, How the Grinch Lost Christmas will be released this upcoming holiday season with the publisher announcing Thursday the story will pick up a year after the Grinch's heart grew and it helps to teach the true spirit of giving. Did you know the original Grinch sold nearly 10 million copies in North America since being published back in 1957? I believe it. And it's, <laughs> I, do you ever watch that whenever you were younger? Oh, yeah. It's oh, yeah. The classic one, too. Because right. I know they've done the remakes with Jim Carrey, so good. Benedict Cumberbatch, which are, which are good in their own right. But the original classic, that is a mainstay at the Struberg Family is Christmas. Is it all? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Do you love The Grinch? Because I love The Grinch. It's, it's great. You, yeah. And I the mean, sequel is supposed to be pretty yeah. cool because he, like, creates this Christmas crown competition. <laughs> And then there's some problems, and he threatens to leave Whoville. It's just, it looks like it's going to be good. So good. Yeah. Uh, Can't wait for it. We have to have a watch party, huh? <laughs> Let's do it. Well, speaking of things that are normally reserved for kids' books, meet Ben. Ben is proving to be smarter than the average bear. He escaped his home at the St. Louis Zoo yesterday. No one at the zoo was hurt while workers wrangled him. It's the second time this month, though, that he's gotten out. The zoo is now working on how to keep the adventurous four-year-old from venturing any further. Hey, it's a bear. That's what yeah. they do. I went to the Smoky Mountains recently. Did you? And we had a visitor. Oh, <gasps> stop. Yes. Jay. Yes. What happened? Little bear cub comes up to our cabin, puts its paw on the window. Oh. It was, it was, yeah, it, was, cute, it, was huh? flat, it was like half adorable, half terrifying. <laughs> Climbed up on the back porch. I mean, <gasps> oh it's wow! Not, like Curious Bear is a real thing. Oh yeah. Do you think he was hungry? Maybe looking for food? I or? think so. Oh, There's cabins yeah. all around the area too. Oh, wow. So. That's cool. That's what they you do. Got picks. That's what they Who do. Want to see pics. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Well, now to a sport with a cult following. It's really rolling with a new generation, and 20 of the best will be carrying the pride of the USA into an international competition. Our friend Robert Boyd wheeled his way to a rink in Tampa to show us this isn't your typical all skate. This is a full contact sport, so a lot of people describe roller derby as football on skates. There's rain the pain, 
Miranda Slambert, Abby Normal, and don't forget about Mean Bean and Flo Mo. So are you more bean or are you more mean? I'd say I'm more mean. These Derby Dynamos have been skating together in Tampa for years, which is what made it so special when they were all selected to be on Team USA. It's a big moment. Like when I got my acceptance letter, I literally cried. It's all the best players in the country. It's like crazy that I'm like up there. Yeah. It's really exciting. We get to go together and do it as a team. <laughs> It's really fun because we're all just a big family. The Junior Roller Derby World Cup is held every two years, and this July, France is hosting. My dad's trying to get me to hike the Tour de Mont Blanc right after the tournament. Attitude over here. Rojo Grande will be right alongside these skaters as an official Team USA coach. They have earned this spot on this team. I'm super proud of them, especially when I have watched them grow up. I'm a little nervous because right now I'm talking to Rain the Pain. You're not going to hurt me, are you? No, I'm not. I, I, I promise. come in peace. I promise, yes. How excited are you to go represent the United States and France? I'm thrilled. I couldn't imagine anything else better than this, man. But they can't make it to France on grit and determination alone. They are asking for the community's support. You know, they're young, coming from a diverse background, so fundraising for them is really critical to get them there. Is there a country out there that makes you nervous to go up against? Mm. Or USA could take on anybody? USA can take on anybody, man. That's, that's the spirit. That's the spirit. <laughs> Yeah, show those guns. You heard Robert <laughs> talk about their fundraising effort. The team has a GoFundMe page set up, and we have that link set up on our Facebook page. Just search Afternoon Focus. You a roller derby person, roller skating, um, anything? I liked roller skating when I was a kid, um, but, yeah, I mean, good for them. I mean, hey, go Team USA. They look like they're having fun. They look strong, like you said. How about you? I did roller blading. Oh, Like, whenever that yeah. became, like, roller hockey became big whenever I was a kid. And I caught on, like, I love that. I, love I bet. Because it. it's easier than ice skating. Ice skating, I, you'll fall over and stuff. Like, roller blading was much easier. Right. Because I suspect those, those folks were whipping around the rings. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know how they do it. Incredible. All right. Well, it's time to get your popcorn ready as we bring you a few quick stories you can share with your family and friends. Stuff that's just, well, fun to know. And our theme today centers on the birth of an inventor and innovator who changed the way we well do everything from talking on the phone to taking pictures, listening to music, and just plain getting information. We are talking about the late, great Steve Jobs. He was born on this day back in 1955. His birth mom selected his adopting parents only after they decided to fund his college education, which is ironic because Jobs famously dropped out of college, as we know. Ended up doing very well for himself. I think so. <laughs> yeah, and uh, did you know that while in high school, Jobs met Steve Wozniak, but their first project together wasn't a computer project. Yeah, it's fun to know the pair spent six months building a telephone box that would allow you to make free long distance calls. Jobs said without those boxes and that friendship, there'd be no Apple. So it's also fun to know that Wozniak told one of our producers Part of the reason Apple's products were smaller than their competitors is because his family didn't have enough money to buy lots of circuits, so he had to learn how to create shortcuts to make the computers work with fewer parts. I guess we all benefited. They're smaller. It's easier. I'll be darned. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine what we would do without these things right now? No. Like, no, it's I'm so ingrained. My, I have mine with me, but it's hidden behind the pillow. Just going to be I honest. Mean, I can't go anywhere without it. <laughs> yeah, it's just... Uh, it's it's like an extension of you, right? <laughs> I know. The only bad thing is, is, though, if you're glued to it too much, you lose track of like being in the moment. Uh -huh. You know? Oh, definitely. Like I fear definitely. that that take over a little bit. So you got to be careful with mm -hmm. your addiction. Got to strike that right yeah. balance, yes, and be be very very present. Yes. Uh, that is for sure. Oh, well, speaking of being present, we want you to stick around and be present for some more good news we have straight ahead, including a young lobbyist who may not have a driver's license, but is driving serious change in his community. The great part about it is that we live in a world and a nation where change is always possible. I'm moving through life with joy and passion, with hope and kindness, and hopefully that's what is reciprocated. Check out this time lapse taken from sunrise to sunset at the Seattle Space Needle. Standing at 605 feet tall, it has graced the skyline there for more than 60 years. 
it is really beautiful to see in person. Have you been to Seattle? I, I haven't. Jane. I do love time lapses though. I can mm -hmm. just get caught in those, but I haven't seen it. Yeah, often. just gorgeous. Oh, well, welcome back to Afternoon Focus. And the young man we want to introduce you to next is truly a magic maker, as we call them. One of those good people doing good things that we like to highlight on this show. He is a teen activist and he is on the move, whether he is with fellow students or with lawmakers. Yeah, Greg McQuaid introduces us to the young man from Chesterfield, Virginia, who is dedicated to bettering the lives of other young people. Good to see you. I know this is a long time coming. Elijah Lee. Yeah. Isn't old enough to vote. Yes, sir. But he feels most comfortable lobbying at the state capitol. How do we get as many young people as possible to the General Assembly? The 15-year-old can't drive, but he thrives being a vehicle for progress. Hey, how are you? Elijah is the founder of Hear Our Voices. Our young people, in my opinion, are the most valuable resource to any community. The nonprofit advocates for fellow teens and children. Our entire motto, our entire mission and vision is dedicated to lifting up our young people. So that means talking about human trafficking and child abuse in our community. That means talking to community members and stakeholders within those communities to how we can better support our young people. One of Elijah's first acts was to raise money to build a safe room for victims of child abuse at the Children's Hospital of Richmond at VCU. And I think it was the feeling of not being able to understand what some of my peers were going through, their level of pain. I think that's what hurt the most. The young man from Chesterfield encourages other teens to become socially aware. His group provides seed money for causes fellow young people believe in. The great part about it is that we live in a world and a nation where change is always possible. The North Carolina native is no shrinking violet. Elijah regularly delivers remarks at marches and civil rights commemorations. His activism is attracting a lot of attention. Elijah has been featured nationally in magazines, on television, and even as a character in the comic Marvel's Hero Project. Oh, he's a leader within the classroom now, definitely, yes. Maggie Walker High School teachers Amy Maxey and Adam Rachi say fellow students naturally gravitate toward their blossoming freshmen. Well, the class has already pegged him to be uh, in the political realm, and we're just excited to see how far he gets. Yes, I do. I see him making a difference in the world. Elijah's already planning for a future beyond where most high school students can see. He's only a freshman. It's just a part of my identity now at Maggie Walker. Elijah's bedroom, decorated with political posters and causes he supports, is his sanctuary. It's also home to his growing collection of bracelets and sunglasses. So my mom is not a fan of me wearing these in public, but you know, I, I think they work. He may shine, but Elijah admits he has worked tirelessly to find his voice. Yeah, I think I found this, this level where I'm moving through life with joy and passion, with hope and kindness, and hopefully that's what is reciprocated. The young man who has already accomplished so much says his journey is just beginning. I'm taking every day, one day at a time, and recognizing what can I learn from today, how can I grow today, and how can we move not only Virginia, but our nation forward today. And I think that's the one thing that I'm keeping in mind. Oh, I think it's safe to say he's got a pretty bright future. Yes. Like when somebody speaks that passionately about something that they care about and is young like he was, it's contagious. It's inspiring. It you can't help but lean in and, you know, wait for the next word. What a bright young man. I, I, I'm with you, Jay. I mean, his future, the sky is the limit for 15-year-old Elijah. And, and the fact that he's so emotionally intelligent, too, to be thinking about, you know, how can I move our nation forward today? What 15-year-old kid is thinking about that? They're thinking about getting a new pair of Jordans. And, <laughs> Basketball, you know, what whatever. They're do on the weekend, the yeah. next TikTok they're putting up. This kid, he's going to be a lawmaker. Oh, definitely. I mean, or maybe a judge or something. He's going to do something big. I mean, I he's already wait. lobbying people, and yeah. uh, it, it's impressive Get stuff. Get ready. He's yeah. going to, you know. I'm also just kind of just impressed in general at how articulate he was mm -hmm. in that story. So well-spoken. It's very encouraging. Sure is. Oh. Well, stick around to see a mother's invention aimed at helping mixed-race families. Stay with us.
Thanks so much for staying with us. So census data tells us that the number of people who identify as multiracial is growing rapidly, and that's also creating some new situations for families. Yeah, Vanessa Mishania introduces us to the woman who created a tool to help with those obstacles. When you raise kids, love comes first, and then the rest of the answers to the millions of questions seem to follow. Um, and so the way that I understood my identity is very different than the way my kids are going to understand their identities. But as a mother of multiracial children, Lynn Vander knows that she was not going to have all the answers. It's near impossible to lean on my own lived experience and how that happens because it's such a different set of forces that are acting on how my kids are going to see themselves. The multiracial population grew 276 percent from 2010 to 2020, according to census data. What the data does not show, many say, is the complex identity that comes with being multiracial and the isolation parents who are raising kids that look and identify differently than themselves can face. It can be really isolating when you have to limit yourself to one label and you have to deny one aspect of your identity in order to try to find acceptance. Often people assume that I am like just black because my complexion also plays a role in how I'm seen in the world. But I do have a multicultural family, um, a multicultural identity. We need to prepare our children for the bias they're going to encounter in the world. And this can be uncomfortable for many of us because it's not something that maybe we were raised to understand. This is the idea behind Lynn's new venture, Samara, an app designed for multicultural parents and teens to help them connect and better understand one another. Using her public and family health background, Lynn's team uses research to create daily reflection questions meant to help connect parents and kids and information about navigating relationships and biases. It also has a community to help connect parents who are going through the same things. It helps us to validate that we're not alone in, in these scenarios because there are things that come up that feels like Am I the only one that gets this question all the time? Like, the, are those your kids' question? Am I the only one that hears this every day? It was a bridge and had the resources that I've been looking for. Sadie Jackson is one of the teens who helped develop Samara Rise, the separate app for multiracial teens. Sadie says its goal is to provide resources to help teens like her develop their identities. It's allowed me to feel seen and worthy in my own identity. I hope they see their identity as full and I hope they find the community that will support them uh, through that journey. Helping your child find out who they are is an important part of being a parent, these two say. And for the growing amount of multicultural families, the right information can make it possible, they hope. Our families are whole, our families are beautiful, and our families should be celebrated, and our families should be safe. You know, admittedly, it's hard to understand that struggle because mm -hmm. I'm glad you said I, that. I'm not multiracial, right. and I don't. Right. I, the po her, to her point, you know, she. A lot of people think she was black, but mm -hmm. she was saying she has a different racial background too. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't understand what that would be like, and it's right. it's hard to put yourself in their shoes. Right. I feel the same way. You said that so well, Jay. Um, you know, kudos to her. I mean, using a lot of ingenuity, and then it's really coming from a good place, a very personal place, and. Um, so hopefully it takes off and does a lot of good. Hopefully over time, there'll just be more and more multiculturalism with, Definitely. you know, because it surged so, so much over that 10-year uh, period, so. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good story. Uh, well, don't go anywhere. Please stay with us to hear the positive affirmations that one girl gave her hamster when we come back. Uh-oh. Cameron Diaz, are you doing your nightly affirmations? You are strong. You are beautiful. You are perfect. You are the best hamster ever alive right now. Nobody will be more beautiful than you. <laughs> if you didn't catch the name, that hamster's name is Hamron Diaz, one of the many hamster TikTok stars. Folks, we have too much time on our hands. We have way too much time on your hands. I'm supposed to entertain this video. <laughs> It is a cute little hamster, right? Oh my hey. gosh, adorable. I Even mean, hamsters need positive information. Yes, Jay Struberg, <laughs> yes. I feel like I need to start doing that with my animals. Oh, do it. I, I really should have a dog and a cat. I feel oh, like yeah. they could use some affirmations. Yeah, they're giving you love all the time, so <laughs> they, why not? They deserve it. <laughs> oh, we hope you have an awesome weekend. Please join us back here on Monday when you're going to meet a Florida man who makes a living answering a very simple question. What's going on out here? 
He now has the attention of the state. Learn the story behind his inspiration and his infectious positive spirit. That's on Monday's show. Can't wait for it. That does it for us. And we want to hear from you, of course. Send yes. us your ideas to our Facebook page. And of course, see you back here on Monday afternoon. I'll let you do the line. So you do it with me, Jay. It's all good. All right. Same time, same, same couch. couch. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <See> you <laughs>